two, three. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. It is a joy to be with you, and a little bit later on the show, I'm going to be bringing on Sonny Don Johnston, who's a spiritual entrepreneur, a mentor, a best-selling author, a speaker, a psychic medium, and Sonny loves sharing tools and techniques so you can create a life you love. Extremely important. So I think somehow Sonny is pinned on this. I have a new computer and it's, it is the love of my life and also the bane of my existence in this moment. So we'll just check into that. No, nope, she's not pinned. So maybe I'll just pin myself. How does that sound? Ta-da. Thanks everybody for being with us live. And for those of you who are going to enjoy the replay, we're going to bring you an amazing conversation. <clears throat> this show, Dare to Dream, won the COV Award for Best Radio Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high-ranking self-improvement in Apple Podcasts, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. This show today is sponsored by Tatum. Tanya at the Wellness Center located in Westlake Village, California. I want to thank them because they offer very cutting edge machines you might want to check out, like the 24 unit energy enhancement system. It's called the EES, the Hocat, Selsonic VIIP, Metatron Hunter Scanner. Haven't tried that one yet. And the Rife Machine. And you can schedule an appointment there. She's amazing. And she will know exactly what you need. Go to the website detox03detox03.com so you can book with Tatiana at the Wellness Center and get well. I am Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach. I help spiritual messengers get their message out from their being onto paper and get published. I also run a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller status. I do all the heavy lifting for you. Finally, I'm a publicist. And as a publicist, every now and then, I teach my spiritual messenger tribe how to be interviewed on radio and podcast. I have a free webinar coming up. People are signing up already. Please do so, so I can help you become more visible. Go to myvisibility.site, S-I-T-E, slash registration. Myvisibility.site, slash registration. And I will help you learn how to be your own PR agent publicist, much like what I do, so you can be an industry trailblazer. Yahoo. Again, my guest today is Sunny Dawn Johnston. She's an acclaimed psychic medium just perfect for this show, a transformational thought leader and spiritual business mentor. She's the author of 21 books, including bestsellers, Invoking the Archangels, and Love Never Finds. Sunny is also the creator of Elevate Your Life membership site, a virtual community focused on designing a high vibrational life of abundance, self-love, and joy. SDJ Productions is all about Sunny's writing, speaking engagements, publishing books, CDs, and her latest project is the multi-dimensional, ooh, sounds amazing, multi-dimensional oracle card deck. And in her spare time, Sunny helps as a psychic investigator for the international organization Find Me, collaborating to support law enforcement and families of missing persons and homicide victims. If you would like to learn more, go to her website, and it is her name, SunnyDawnJohnson.com. And with that, I welcome the very beautiful Sunny to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, ditto. Me as well. And so you're actually here for two reasons. The first is I've done press media every year for Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles. We work together. And so I've seen your name around there and I'm amazed we've actually never crossed paths. But more recently, old friend of this show, Emmanuel Dagger was on and he brought up your name and kind of alluded you guys are great friends. And I thought, you know, 
that feels like the sign from the universe. I'm supposed to meet her. She's supposed to come on. And so we thank CLE and we thank Emmanuel that you're here. And I'm right. You guys are close friends, you and we Emmanuel. Are. We are. We are good, good buddies and have been for several years. He's such a gem. He's such a great, great soul. Yeah, that must be such an amazing relationship. I'm happy for you both. Good people. And I understand, Sunny, that you experienced a miraculous intervention of archangels during the birth of both of your children. I did. Yeah. What happened? How did that translate into this deeply rooted passion that you have for sharing divine wisdom these days? You know, that's a great question. That's not usually asked that way. So I like it. Um, I, I'd been working with the angels since I was 13 years old. Uh, and so I was familiar with the energy, but I also was very, um, I was push and pull. You know, I think a lot of us, I'm sure the audience, we, we're in that, okay, this is really cool. And we're like, ah, I'm not sure. And they're like, ah, this is really cool. And they're like, ah, you know, I kind of want to be normal and want to fit in. And, and so, you know, when I was 18, I um, was pregnant with my first son and it was not a planned pregnancy. Um, and I had a lot of serious health issues. I ended up um, toxemic, which turned into preeclampsia, which turned into eclampsia. Um, and while I was in labor with him the second time, um, I had a stroke. Oh. And in that uh, process of, um, of, of really having a stroke, they, they knocked me out, took the baby. And, you know, most of the time we are concerned with the baby in those situations, like make sure the baby's going to be okay. And, and gratefully my son was fine, but, um, I wasn't. And so after that, um, that emergency, uh, C-section, I developed a 106.3 degree temperature for almost three weeks without being able to break it. And, you know, when we get up that high, it's brain damage and, um, all kinds of different organs shutting down and things like that. And, you know, it might explain a few things. I'm just saying <laughs> my, my time that I was checked out of there, but, uh, but you know, what happened was actually Archangel Raphael came to me in my hospital room, um, the night, the night before mother's day and, um, guided me through a process of, of literally, um, breathing in this beautiful emerald green healing energy. And, um, and that's all I was to do was just do this. And I did it for over 12 hours and I fell asleep at some point doing it. And I woke up the next morning, my fever finally broke after three weeks. Oh my. And, um, when the doctors came in, they said, you know, we, they had taken me off the medication. I'd actually signed my rights over because they said, we didn't think, we don't think you're going to live through the night. And so it was kind of a, um, an experience where it's do or die right now. And Raphael's presence showed up to help me to um, do. And uh, so the doctors, you know, they, they called it, they threw around the M word uh, miracle because they don't know how else to explain it, of course. And, uh, and I knew, I knew that it was my angels, um, number one, giving me another, another chance. And also number two, um, trying to help me to get clear, like, okay, don't do this push and pull thing any longer, Sunny. Mm. Like, come on, we're here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a slow learner. So, <laughs> but you were only 18. I was only 18. And so I, I do thank you for that credit because, <laughs> you know, I was only 18, but you know, I'm a slow learner and I, you know, for the first few months I went with it and I was like, okay, yes. And then life happened, pressures happened, you know, I was in a, a really difficult situation. I was on food stamps and welfare. I was barely surviving. And um, and I pushed away again and I did that again for another five or six years. Um, and, and, and at the same time, it's so interesting because, you know, when you're, when you know, something's good for you, it's like nutrition people know that, okay, yeah, I probably shouldn't have 12 cookies, but you know what? We do it anyway. Right. So that's kind of what, what was happening. Like, I didn't feel like I had control. And what I realized now is that was actually the issue is I felt like I needed to be in control. Oh my God. And, you know, it, and, and the creating that I was doing while I was being in control was not good. <laughs> so it's like, maybe we should just, uh, let some help come in. And, and, and here was the thing, Debbie, I didn't feel like I deserved it. Mm. I, I just, 
I didn't feel worthy of it. It wasn't that I'd done anything horrible, but in my growing up, I came from Salt Lake City, Utah, you know, being a psychic medium, having experiences with angels and talking to dead people was not accepted. It was not believed. Um, it was not okay. And so that kind of, I internalized that and made that about who I was and my value, you know? Um, and, and so I had these miracles and then I had these life experiences that gave me the complete opposite contrast and I got stuck in the middle, you know, I got stuck in the middle. Um, and, and luckily the, you know, then I had another baby several years later after I met and married, my husband got out of that situation at another child who, um, Archangel Gabriel came to me that time and, um, and saved that baby's life. So in that experience, um, I was awakened in the morning and, 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 and I was told there's something wrong. Like you need to have this baby now, like now. And I'm like, I was, um, three and a half weeks before I was due. And I called my doctor and I said, um, I, <laughs> I know this sounds really naive, but this is what I said. I said, um, I know that I need to have this baby right now. And she's like, okay, honey, listen, everybody, when they're eight months pregnant, feels like they have to have the baby now, right? Get it out. And I just, as I'm done, I'm tired. It's all end of August in Arizona. Like I'm tired of being pregnant. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's not because I don't want to have the baby. It's just, I, there's something wrong. And, and she said, yeah, I'll call you back in a few weeks. And, you know, I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks. You're fine. And then she called me back and she, she called me back and she said, you know, she had been with me. I'd lost three babies in between those two. And she'd been with me through all those losses. And she called me back and she said, there's something about your mother's intuition that I trust. And so come on in. And so um, I had the baby. They did an emergency C-section again. Well, not an emergency, scheduled C-section. Um, but the cord was wrapped around my son's neck twice and he was completely blue. And um, they were able to resuscitate him, get him breathing. And um, he is a completely healthy 26-year-old now. So um, the miraculous experience of Archangel Raphael and Archangel Gabriel combined kind of started helping me turn the corner and say, okay, maybe <laughs> this is something I shouldn't push, push against any longer and, and open the door really to um, some of my value, you know, and, and worth and knowing that I wasn't taking away from anyone else in order to be connected to this uh, amazing support system that we have, which was a, a big part of the challenge for me. Mm, thank you. That's an amazing story, I have to say. And I want to go back to that point you made about control, mm -hmm. that you would have these experiences. Mm -hmm. And at some point you said, no, no, and took back the control and your life wasn't going so well. So that's huge. Um, do you feel like control has something to do with trust, trust in oneself, trust in the universe, trust that... When we let go and we really don't know, will something be better than this, different than this, my dream, even better, a sacred dream. Do you feel like that's all woven in together? I do. A hundred percent. And I think that what, what our training is, is not that it's going to be better, that it's going to be worse, mm. that, that something bad's going to happen. It's the, it's the fear of the unknown that's so ingrained into us from just little teeny people you know, well, don't do that. You might get hurt. Don't do that. You might fall, you know, all those things. And then don't take that risk because something might happen. Instead, nobody ever said, Hey, yeah, jump in. It might be fun. That, that wasn't in my experience anyway. Right. It was, Hey, take that risk because you never know what's on the other side of it. You can have mm -hmm. a really amazing experience. So I think that training has taught us to absolutely to not trust that guidance, the guidance that says, you know, jump into it. The guidance that says, take that step, the guidance that says trust, then our ego comes in and says, nope, that's not safe. And so then we hang on and we do what we know, which is safe, which is in control. And then we push against all of those opportunities. And those opportunities, I believe, is where spirit's coming in. And we don't create, we don't make room for the magic and the mystical experiences because we're so busy trying to control and organize every step along the way. And what is the recipe then for people who are resonating with what you're talking about and saying, yeah, I have that. I do that. And I'd like to not do that, but I actually don't trust enough to not yeah. do that. How yeah. can they 
what kind of steps can they take or what can they be or what can they implement to allow themselves to experiment in that space? Yeah. Well, I think that's a great word, experiment. You know, we, we have to find what's going to work for us. And I'm by no means saying, hey, just go, go jump off the cliff and know that, you know, our game to Raphael is going to fly in and save you. Like, I'm not saying that. However, what I think is really important, and this was what helped me, and maybe this will help some of you, is I realized that when I thought about the unknown, it was always around fear. It always was. It was like, it's not going to be good enough. I'm not going to have enough money. I'm not going to have enough food to feed my children. I'm not going to find a place to live. I'm not going to be able to survive this illness, whatever it was. And what I realized and what spirit said to me is all possibility in your life lives in the unknown also. Every possibility that could ever exist lives in your unknown, in your unknown. Not in the, in the spirits unknown, but in your unknown. And so you're going to step into the unknown one way or another. You can do it from a place of knowing that every possibility is there. And a lot of those are on the high frequency, on the, on the, the spiritual manifestation, mysterious, um, um, the be better than you could ever imagine. And it never especially when I was younger, it never occurred. That never occurred to me. What occurred to me was as long as I control it and I organize it and I plan it, then I know what to expect. But my expectations never met my desires, my dreams. They met the very minimum, the very base, the very base level. And, and so the unknown is exciting. And if we can start to train ourselves to believe that, because, you know, it isn't about and the beliefs that we've had, a lot of them aren't ours and a lot of them don't serve us. So we get to create a new belief at any time. So today, right now, that could be our truth. That could be our affirmation is the, all possibility lives in the unknown. And that is exciting because then I don't have to figure it out. All I've got to do is open up to it and I got to just let go a little bit. I don't have to let go all the way like this, but I got to let go a little bit and then spirit can come in. And that's where the magic is. Mm. Wow. You know, <clears throat> my human design, um, I don't remember what the, I'm a two, four generator. And in my human design for everybody, there is something that is a weakness that actually interrupts your life. And then of course you've got your strengths. My weakness is fear. Mm. And so this is something I've had to face my whole life, always getting to the precipice and like, this organizational thoughts about what if, and maybe not. And all, yeah, it's, it's really big in my space. And I was being interviewed there. I have a client who's got an amazing podcast and she's very good at asking questions. And she had me on her podcast and she kept asking me questions about my life and successes. And towards the end, I had this huge aha. And I said, oh, thank you so much for the way you asked me those questions, because I just recognized that every big, wonderful thing that's ever happened to me, that is like a reference point in my life and so meaningful and helped define who I am was because I let go. Yeah. Every single one of them is that I got to a place in my life and I said, poof, I give it up. I'm going to follow energy and surrender. And I never recognized what a huge role that had played in my life. So mm -hmm. that's my dance often is like, and not everyday things, people, sure. but I mean, like, you know, the big ticket items, yeah. right? We've never done before, or, you know, really extending out in a whole new area and uh, going the fear. And then, oof, that surrender that's just begging to be paid attention to because- yes. Like you said, this is where the magic is. This is where it can happen. And I love that, Debbie, because, you know, to me, what I've learned, and certainly this wasn't, I didn't learn this in my 20s, um, but I've learned it as I've had so many of those fears, because that was so ingrained in my life, is that hmm. I've discovered that any fear that shows up for me is actually the next step. It's the next step. And I might not like it and I might get a pit in my stomach and I'd be like, okay, you guys, seriously, like, nope, I'm, and a lot of times I'll turn around and go the other way for a little while, but it always comes back and it always is eventually mm -hmm. the next step. And if I'm listening and I'm, and I'm aligned and I'm tuned in, then I go with it. 
And it's the times where I don't, where I feel like, nope, I know better. Hold on, control, stay with the plan that I had. And then it just, not that it puts me back because it all perf is, is perfectly in divine time, but certainly it creates more challenge. Mm. I create more challenge. <laughs> to be clear. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's if, I, if I'm looking for ease, then mm. if I, the fear shows up, I'm like, yep, that's next step. And I, and I, and now most of the time, not always, but most of the time after I adjust myself a little bit, right. I go, all right, that's, that's the direction. And it can be big things. It can be, you know, investments in things, investment in energy and investment in time and investment in money that I'm like, I don't know if I have that. Right. Oh yeah, son, you do. You just got to clean up some of the things that you're already invested in. So I think that that's a really good point. And to your point, um, something that for me is always the sign of what's to come. Yes, 100%. I'm reflecting so much as you speak. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. I love that. And I was thinking in that Jimmy Stewart movie, when they say, every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets its wings. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for us, every time we hear or feel fear ring, it means there's a beautiful opportunity for you on the other side of it. Yes. yes. And Go I think it's about teaching us that we don't have to have control that that was a false idea. It, it's an illusion. It's not real anyway. And most of the time when we feel like we're really in control, we are so not in control. We are just, we, we're just kind of sliding down in an area that we don't really recognize yet. Mm. Well, okay. You talked about when you step into this magical space, how many possibilities and opportunities are there. And I'm going to hearken back to your bio that said, you've got a new project, Oracle deck. Awesome. I love Oracle decks. I have, I have a bunch and I really yeah. use them, but this is one I've never heard of before. Multi-dimensional yeah. Oracle deck. Please explain what well, this is Sure, about. sure. So uh, during the pandemic, we had a lot of downtime in the sense of, um, movement. You know, normally I travel a lot. I wasn't traveling a lot. And, and, and probably the end of 2020, I just heard that term spirit said multidimensional Oracle. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. So I actually Googled it because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know what it meant. And I Googled it and some kind of computer technology thing came up that was way over my head. And I'm like, well, they could not possibly mean that. Right. And so I sat with it and I'm like, okay, what, what is that? And then over the next, you know, month or so, I started getting um, images. And so what, what showed up, what ended up being uh, manifest uh, within me and then, and then through me was um, a, a card deck that supports the multi dimensions that we are. So it's, it's, um, it's ascended masters, it's numbers like angel numbers, it's um, symbols and it's, um, um, what's the other one numbers and symbols and masters and animals because we are multidimensional and we get our messages through all of these different ways, but most of the decks of cards, cause I'm a big Oracle card deck lover too. I have probably, I don't even know, cause I put them all in a basket and let, when people come to my healing center, they choose them. I, I probably have 200 decks all together. Um, but that's what spirit was saying is we're multidimensional beings and we receive messages in all these ways. So I put together a deck that create that, that combines all of those. And what I love about it is that I don't need to pull, like I used to pull an angel card and then I'd pull an animal card, right? So I'm having kind of a physical connection and the spirit connection. And this way it's all in one deck, basically. How exciting. Um, do you have the deck nearby by any chance? That's such a great question. I don't because I just used them yesterday um, in my uh, in my um, interview that I did yesterday, but I have one so I can show you the one that I have. Yeah, hold it <laughs> it's up. It's not the best one, but um, it's number ones actually. So there's the angel numbers um, and each one. And then what, what the frequency represents of that particular um, message. Now, here's the thing that's interesting that I did differently as well, Debbie, is I did not create a guidebook. And people had a fit. 
not all people, not all my normal clients and students, because they know me, but people that ordered them and then there wasn't a guidebook with it. Um, we're like, well, wait, I need a guidebook. And because spirit said, the guide's inside of you. It's not in the book. The answers are not in the book. The answers are inside of you. And, and part of the purpose of creating this deck was to help people to connect more with their own intuitive abilities. And so what I did is I did put one online that gave explanations for each one of the cards, but I made it a little bit more challenging to go to the book because don't we have a perception that the book has the answers, right? And spirit said, the book doesn't have the answers. The answers are inside of you and it's your interpretation on any given day. This card, if I pull this card today, is going to mean something different to me than I pull it in eight days or in 17 days, because depending on where I am in my life and my experience, it shows up different, um, not because it's different, but because I'm different. And so that, that's been an interesting journey to witness some of the challenge that people had when I kind of broke I broke the rules. <laughs> I have to say, it. you are, it, it's, this is very synchronistic because I've literally been guided to experiment with the very thing you're talking about. And I've done it the last, I mean, I am talking like two days, three days where I actually read somewhere that there's sacred shamanism and to allow the picture, it's so evocative. It will, if you'll just get out of the way, it will speak volumes yes. and you can very well interpret. You have the wisdom and the guidance to interpret what is there for you. And that is exactly what I've been doing. Um, That's perfect. So and I, and it's what is there for you? for now, right? Like in, in yes. this moment, because, because you are different in three days than you are today. And so it's going to speak differently to you, you know? And I think part of the, part of the reason this came through is because my training way back when, when I was a teenager, I used to use, um, I used to do Gonki Fat Choi cards, which are a very old um, a, a form of um, divinity that that um, use playing cards on on a on a map basically, okay. and um, and in those cards it's just playing cards, so it's not like you can see something different in each card. But I I noticed at a young age that when I had the eight of hearts, let's say in the success area, it was different for me that time than it was two weeks later when I saw that card again, it, it, it was, and I noticed that was my evolution. It wasn't that the cards ever changed. And so I really wanted to give, and I love that you're doing that because I, I really, part of my goal, I think in life is to help people to learn to trust themselves and their guidance and their team and their support and their um, discernment and discernment is hard because that ego is just, you know, telling all kinds of stories, but I think because I struggled so much with it for so long that it doesn't have to be that hard. It does not have to be that hard. This is so going to be such a wild tie in uh, because I'm listening to you and I realize that on Tuesday evening, just two nights ago, I went to a brand new function. A friend invited me and then he got sick and he couldn't go. And it was um, an angel group. These people meet and do an angel group. And I thought, well, that sounds wonderful. So I went. And the first thing we do in the group is we each picked a card. And then we went around and said who we were and what the card meant. No reading the book. Now the card was control. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. You can't write this stuff. And this, so, is, this is how it works. <laughs> this is how it works. And you know, I've had a lot of loss, like my mom died a few weeks ago and a lot of, there's just a lot of stuff around other people's health and situations. But at the same time, I have tremendous uh, spiritual growth and I can feel what's happening. I don't understand fully, but I can feel and I'm open, open. And so I read, I saw this card and it was beautiful and the word control. And I thought, well, I don't have control. I really don't have any control. And I sort of talked about that. Um, and when I think it's too much, spirit sometimes goes, you have big shoulders, you're all right. Um, and then when I read the book, it said, you don't think you do, but you have control. And I'm like, ah, 
okay, that's kind of cool. But I feel like the immediate perception I had of it was actually the right reading right. without going through the book. Yeah. So I support you that these are pictures, that these are evocative. And do they have numbers on them? Is there any? They do. There's, no, there's a number at the bottom. So there's a little number at the bottom and that's just for organization really, but it isn't because that's symbolic to people, right? The words are symbolic. The image is symbolic. The, 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 the way that people, the colors are symbolic. And so each one, I think, you know, and this is what I've learned because I loved Oracle cards so much though, is what I would do is I would discount what my feeling was, which I've done in my life in lots of ways to validate somebody else's, right? And that's, that's been a, a life journey for me personally, which is why when I was, especially when I started working with the cards more consistently in my career, you know, in my, in my late twenties, um, because I would do that when I was doing a reading for somebody, I had my own connection and then I would flip the card over and then I would look at the book and I'd be like, hmm, that doesn't fit with what I felt, but it's got to be right because so-and-so wrote the book. And what spirit said to me is that the messages that are in the book are created for masses. They're not created for you. They're created for the masses. And so you can go to the book afterwards. If you like, didn't feel like you were tapped in, that can maybe help guide you, but it was never meant, it was never meant for that to be the answer key to our life questions. It was never meant that way, but we use it that way. And so where can people go to find this deck? Is it out yet? Yeah, it for sure is. You can go to multidimensionaloracle.cards, um, C-A-R-D-S. Um, or you can get them on my website too. So I've got actually, um, uh, the, the link is in my boutique. Uh, you can go and actually see the cards through the angel numbers, which is just a little free area under services and about page. Uh, so there's all kinds of ways, but multidimensionaloracle.cards is uh, where you can get the deck. And then what happened is after I did the deck, uh, I did 44 cards for the deck. I did 11 of each one because I have a thing with 11s. And um, and then more animals start showing up. And I'm like, well, wait, I, I, already did, I already did them. And then more Ascended Masters start showing up. So then I did little booster decks so that you can add um, a little booster to, you know, have more Ascended Masters and more animals that can be um, supportive of of the journey as well. So those are, those are available in there too. Oh, that's amazing. I love this. Um, okay. Beautiful. I love the connection. That's a, that was a woo to get right to the connection. hundred percent. Yep. Uh -huh. Experimenting with word control, all of it. And I, yeah, I have experience doing exactly what you're talking about. And I have to say, I prefer it right yeah. now. Yes. Yeah. We have the wisdom. It's good to get um, used to that, used to yeah. using that tool. So here you are, you work with these angels today, you are connected. For people who are going through any kind of issues and they would like some healing and they would like some specific angels to come forward for their healing, uh, let's say right now for physical healing, what kind of angels would you recommend they call upon and what would they say? Well, see, that's such a great question. You're so intuitive. Um, the last year I've been um, dealing with a physical uh, manifestation. I believe physical manifestations are stem from emotional um, unresolved energy and the blocked energy. And so um, I had a shoulder injury and I was very, um, I was in extreme pain for, for many, many, many months. It was very um, debilitating actually. Uh, and I've never had an experience like that to that effect, to that level. And Archangel Raphael, my good old buddy <laughs> from way back when, uh, is really who I worked with the most to help me to not just focus on the physical healing. Because I really think if we just focus on the physical healing and we don't, we don't do what's underlying, then it just moves to another part of the body until we kind of get the point that, hey, we've got to listen to the mind, the body, the spirit, and the emotion connection. But Raphael, working with Raphael helped me to um, start to find ways to have some relief and how to, uh, and, and helped me to be able to also recognize what I was actually 
carrying on my shoulders. And that was a huge, you know, like it was just after the pandemic. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of us that do this work took a lot of personal responsibility in our communities that um, maybe wasn't as healthy for us as, um, as, as it uh, could have been because we maybe went overboard. I, I know I did. And I think a lot of us that were out and have, have communities and have um, a, a, a sense of responsibility to just help people move through things, carried a lot of that. And, and, you know, and then some personal relationships that were changing and things like that. It just, it really, um, um, it really settled in a way that um, wasn't healthy for me. And so Raphael really helped me with that clarity. And then also with the healing, physical healing, but then Archangel Shamuel, who is the angel of, of unconditional love, um, helped me with the piece of it on an emotional level that was loving others and what they needed. Again, I said, this is a theme in my life more than myself, like putting the, the, my community's needs and, and, and my family's needs in front of me, which then just, you know, weighed on um, my shoulders and wasn't, um, it wasn't healthy. And here's the thing. I teach this stuff. Like I know better, right? It's so frustrating when you know better. So <laughs> frustrating. But that's why you're such a great teacher. Yes, because the reality of it is that's what it was, you know? And, and once I could recognize that with the help of Raphael and Shamuel um, and integrating that and really seeing it. And of course, you know, adding in some alternative therapies and things like that. Of course, we use the tools that we have. Um, was able to start to heal something that usually takes two to three years to heal um, on in, in a physical sense um, and was able to heal it in about nine months, uh, which I like the fast track. There's fast track, I'm on it. <laughs> it's the ascension, people. <laughs> Absolutely. And what What did you say specifically? What do you recommend people say when they call in Raphael or Samuel? What do you think they should say? I mean, I understand. I think everybody here knows you have to ask. Right. The angels Always. won't just come in and intercept on your behalf. They're yep. not football players, right? Yep. But yep, you have ask, to invite yep. them in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, so the angels gave me a four step process. They said, ask, allow, get out of the way, let go of control, believe, believe that their presence is there to help you and then receive. So ask, allow, believe and receive were the four steps that I got when I, when I was really young. Um, and I think for me, it's asking Raphael to help me to, to heal um, any and all levels of vibrational frequency that are not serving my highest and greatest good and help me to recognize the patterns that are ingrained in me that I need to release for that healing. Um, so that's how I asked Raphael with Shamuel, uh, what, what is always my prayer with Shamuel is to help me to love myself to the highest level that I can in this human form. Um, because, you know, I understand on a soul level that I'm all, it's hundred percent. I'm great. Ah, la, la. But on a human level, for me, I struggle a lot with, um, wanting to be able to, um, do more than I can for others. And that's um, sometimes where I lose my energy, my time, energy um, investment uh, in myself, quite honestly. Same. Yeah. It's okay. a challenge. Yes. 100%. And it's doable. And it's doable um, if you stay really present. But then, you know, then pandemics happen and you're like, oh, well, here, here I am. Like I was saying at the very beginning, pandemic. I was born for this. I'm like, oh my God, Sonny, are you kidding? What were you thinking? Right. I was born like this type of thing to help and serve and be here right now. I was born for this. I'm like, yeah, cancel that. Wow. Man. Yes. Got it. Okay. Poor body. <laughs> right. Sorry. What, what about if somebody has cancer, would you recommend same angels or different angels? Um, you know, I work with a lot of clients that have cancer and, and really um, difficult, like death diagnosis. That's, that's what a lot of people that come to me are in that stage four metastasized. Um, and, and yes, we work with certainly with um, Archangel Raphael on a variety of different levels, Shamuel for love. Um, but we also call in Zadkiel to help us for, with forgiveness because there's so much um, pain and oftentimes cancer um, on an emotional level, there's a lot of resentment um, involved with, um, with that diagnosis. 
And then we also especially work with Michael to help us to maintain our energy because so many people that are diagnosed with cancer are people that absorb the energy of other people's circumstances, emotions, and, 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 and situations. And so it's learning how to be the observer of other people's energy instead of the absorber of other people's energies. And a lot of people that are diagnosed with cancer, in my experience, um, are absorbers of energy to a point that they don't know where their energy begins and somebody else's ends. And so it's just like somebody has a problem and I just suck it all up and take it on. And then the body can only do that. There, there's only so much space we have in our container. Mm -hmm. And then you talked a little bit about boundaries, we'll call it where you're a giver, right? And I'm, I'm totally an overgiver myself. Um, when I love, I love fiercely, you know? And when I, I, I'm not this way with everybody by any means, but when somebody makes their way into my inner circle, there is something, there's a, a, a bear, if you will, or a lion that comes out that is very nurturing and very connecting. And I have someone's back and all of that. But I am very much in my life where I'm just looking constantly at separation at a whole new level, right? I am separate. I have my own path. What is important for me? So I don't take on the energy of and the path of and mm -hmm. your wants and needs. It's, yeah. I think this really looking at oneself, for those of us who are not selfish by any means, is imperative for us to complete what we came here to do. Otherwise, we get off track constantly we sure do. and we and we lose ourselves in it we we lose ourselves in you know like i think for people that have children you lose yourselves in what your kids are doing in your kids lives and your grandkids lives you know i have three grandkids and 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 i have um, my sons and and i certainly was one of those parents for a long time but at this point i'm i've gotten to be a lot better um with recognizing that it's their experience and their life their pain their struggle, their joy, their happiness, like they get to create it all themselves. And it's not my place to get in the middle of any of it. Like I can offer advice if they ask, um, if they ask, uh, and I can, I can be there to hold space and support them, but they need those ups and downs just like I did. Part, the biggest part of my career and the work I do and the speaking that I do and the teaching and the writing that I do is not about all of the joys of my life. It's been about all of the contrast. It's been about the difficulties that then helped me find the joy, helped me to expand into that greater being and knowing my value. So mm -hmm. I think we, we sometimes get in the way of other people's experiences, thinking we need to save them when we are not saviors. Yeah. I remember uh, learning in my 20s, there is a God and you are not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. This person has their own higher power. Yes. Trust. They got this, you yeah. know, and, and their own journey. And they came with, they have everything within them and around them to be able to support them in their soul's journey, just like you have in your soul's journey. And that's, I think it's really hard to understand when it's your children. Cause you're like, no, 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 I'm in charge. And you're like, oh wait, no, I'm not. Even when they're young. I mean, yes, we can kind of control them in some senses, but even when they're young, it, they're on their own journey. And we, our job is to learn how to get out of the way. That's our job. There's people who are watching, listening, and I'm sure they're thinking, well, how do I find out who my guardian angel is? What would you recommend? Are there techniques for us to discover the name and maybe the personality of our guardian angel? Well, so yes, there are. Um, I'm going to tell you a real quick story and this will tell you how. Okay. Um, I was teaching a class 20 plus years ago called Angel 101. And that was actually the question that somebody asked was, you know, I want to discover my guardian angel's name. And I said, okay, well, then what you need to do is you need to ask. And they said, well, it can't be that simple. And I said, well, actually, it is that simple. Actually, there's a lot of things in life that are simpler than we make them. And they said, well, then what's your guardian angel's name? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I never asked. And they're like, well, why wouldn't you have asked? You're teaching the class, basically. And because I'd had this experience with my guardian angel at 13 that started the whole journey for me, um, I've always felt so connected to her that I never felt like I needed a name, right? Because names are really man-made anyway. Uh, but I got quiet and in front of class and I listened for a minute and I just asked if there's a name 
that or frequency vibration energy that I can um, connect you with, what would that be? And I heard the name, my right ear, Sarah. And so I said, my guardian angel's name, Sarah. And they said, no way, it's not that easy. And I said, well, it just happened. Like it is that easy. So here's what happened. I said over the next week, their homework was to go and do that exercise and then be open to um, validation that, that, that they got the right name. So the next morning I wake up to take my kids to school and we get in the car and Sarah smiles by hollow notes is on the radio. Okay, cool. So I said, cause this is what I do. All right, guys, that was good. Thanks. Good job. I like it. So I pull I'm cars, the, the song's still on the radio. I back out of my driveway. I drive one house forward and I'm at a stop sign. There's a vehicle in front of me. The license plate on the vehicle says, Oh, Sarah. All right, there's two. So things happen for me in threes. So mm. I took my kids to school. I went and picked them up later, went to Costco. Guess who helps me? Sarah. <laughs> she's got a name tag on and everything. She's got a name tag on. <laughs> and, and she. I said, of course you're Sarah. And she's like, excuse me? Nothing. That's just this personal thing that's going on in my head. Um, so I went back to class the next week. And I said, all right, guys, here was my validation. And I didn't feel like I needed it, but my class needed it. And so when I say that it's as simple as asking, I really mean that. Like get quiet and get focused and ask from your heart if there's a name, a frequency, or a vibration that I can connect you with. You might see a flash of your aunt. That's probably her name. You might have a memory of somebody that was in school. Um, you might hear the name. You might feel the connection to a particular person. Go with that and then ask for validation. Okay, help me to validate this so I know for myself that this is it. And then you'll get signs just like, like I got. And then what that does for a lot of people is it helps them feel more connected. We don't need that, it's not necessary, but the human brain, sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. sometimes. I, yeah, so this is, um... This is an unreasonable question, but hearing you say this, I'm wondering if you would be willing to offer a psychic or a channeled message from spirit, something that you feel might be right or aligned right now that we all need to hear. <clears throat> the, the greatest message that um, has been coming through recently, and, and when you ask that question, it um, shows up for me right now, is for that right now at this time, and, and, and it is a really important time in, in our um, experience. Um, we need, must learn how to be loving in the face of anger, fear, resentment, and, and holding the frequency of actually who we are, not letting the external circumstances shift our innate truth and knowing um, we are love and we are meant to love and a lot of times when we're in that conflict when we're witnessing things outside of us that are not um, for us we get into judgment we get into criticism and that does not help number one those that we're looking at but it lowers our frequency and what we need right now, the most important thing that we can be doing is keeping our frequency as high as possible and staying in that loving state. And I'm not saying that we're going to stay there 24 seven. I know you're going to have moments, guys. People are going to cut you off in traffic. I get it. But there are a lot of things we can do. We can nurture our bodies lovingly. We can feed it loving foods. We can, we can watch things that are healthy for our, our minds. We can listen to things that bring in light. So we can maintain that frequency because right now, you know, I don't want to say more than ever because I think there have been critical times in, in, in history, but right now is such a critical time that we are struggling mm. to shine our lights. And I think that the pandemic was an opportunity for us to shine. And I think a lot of people um, dulled their light during that time. And um, it's, we have more opportunities to do this. And right now, shine your light in whatever way is true for you. It's time to stop hiding. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. Oh, that is my platform right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, yes. it, always I tell spiritual messengers, you must learn visibility. You did not come here to shine your light under a rock 
Exactly. You came here to be the light at a time, like your soul said yes, yes to this time. And whether you run around like so many people, I hear it over and over every day and I'm rolling my eyes, forgive me. I'm not saying your reality isn't your reality, but I hear over and over every day, oh, these are really terrible times. And these are, you know, I don't see where this is going. And, and I'm like, well, you have to be, you have to at least live your own being as the solution. And yeah. then you have to step into your piece that you know you came here to do. And that's why I do what I do. I teach the book writing. I teach how to be interviewed. I teach all the, you know, I, I'm only a publicist to people who are spiritual messengers and have good businesses and good work they do. This is important to me. Um, so that, and then I know you do this too, Sunny, which I love that you do this. You mentor people who are starting, building, growing a spirit-based business, Yahoo. And so when you work with spiritual entrepreneurs, can you share tips for people so that they can have a successful business spiritually? Because I believe a thousand percent, we came here to be spiritual, that's innate to us, but we came here to be successful because when we thrive, we have freedom. When we thrive, we're contributing. When we thrive, we have money to do the beautiful things we came here to be and do and et cetera. So can you speak to that? Yes, absolutely. You know, that it's a subject that's close to my heart. And I think part of it's because um, I think a lot of times there's an, um, a, a training that we have that if we're doing spiritual work, we shouldn't be charging for it. That is a common belief. Um, it comes from church, organized uh, religion, not spirituality. And I'm not negating or, or knocking that. I'm just saying that's that's the, the primary reason that we've been trained into that. And I struggled with that. Actually, the first five years of my career was, um, well, this is a spiritual gift and should I be charging for it? Because, but it was my time and it was my energy and I, it was it was my space and I had to pay my bills and all the things. And I couldn't really find a, um, a way to reconcile it within myself until I was struggling so much that I actually couldn't take money. Like if somebody was going to pay me for a reading, I had them put it in a box. I couldn't accept it in my hand. That was like, I was in a bad place with it. But this is what, so I was struggling one day and I was sitting and talking to spirit, which I do all the time. And, and I said, you know, I just, I, I've got to wrap my head. I've got to figure out another way to look at this. And, you know, this is a spiritual gift and I shouldn't be making money on this. And here's what spirit said to me. Um, this was in the night, this was well in the early 2000s. So the Chicago Bulls were very, they were the, the top basketball team. Then Michael Jordan was it. They'd won all those awards three years back to back or whatever. And they showed a picture of him. Now he's number 23, which is my birth date. So it was significant because anytime I see 23, it's a reminder of my value and my worth. And so they showed me a picture of him making a basket. And they said, that is a spiritual gift. And I'm like, well, he makes like $50 million or whatever he makes. That's a spiritual gift. Sonny, everything is spiritual in nature because everything first comes from spirit in order to manifest. And so his playing basketball is a spiritual gift. And the, 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 the football players, that's a spiritual gift. And the artists, it's all spiritual gift. And it all is energy in and money is energy out it's all energy and it's an exchange of that energy so he does his spiritual gift he gets an exchange of energy you do your spiritual gift you get an exchange of energy and from that point on i was clear so it wasn't about the amount of money it was me literally like pushing it away and then i'm like oh wait a minute baby i'm bring it on now i'm good right like okay i'm ready and so i think that that what i see in the community of people that are spiritually spiritual heart-based entrepreneurs is that as much as they want it and they ask for it and they they invite it and they're manifesting it they also turn it down at the same exact breath because of their own ideas and beliefs around what it is to be spiritual whereas the reality of it is we're all spiritual we all are a spirit in a body we all are and so uh, by our very being, we are doing that. Now, some people's ways of expressing their spirit is different. 
but the manifestation of it is that we are meant to be at ease, in joy. And the more that we have, the more that we give. It's just how life works, whether it's that you spend more money in a restaurant or whether you give to a charity. You, the more you have, the more you give. And, and so we want to start changing the, the, the dynamic and the, and the idea that we have to suffer and that they're starving artists. We, you don't need to starve. You're not supposed to. Nobody's supposed to. But those belief systems cause the vibration of lack and starving in us. And then we continue to attract it until we shift it. So for people that are growing and starting building their businesses, the first thing that I talk about is understanding the exchange of energy. Um, and that, that it's all energy and money is just a form that we exchange. And the second thing, which is usually um, the, the, the greatest recognition for people is why you do what you do. What is your why? When you know your why and you recognize that you deserve to have an exchange of energy for your why, those are the two battles that most people struggle with before they can actually start creating what they want intentionally and be, um, uh, be paid for it in in ways that can make a difference in their lives. Oh, you're muted. Uh, thanks. Yes. The other thing that I see is that spiritual entrepreneurs who are gifted will get into this idea of being an entrepreneur, but they don't know where to start. So they're spinning their wheels and there's also this notion of being the everything in which they are not gifted. I need to know how to do marketing. You don't. I need to know how to do social media. I need to know all these pieces that create a successful business. And I know energetically it's draining, but what do you recommend along those lines when people, they just, when someone's gift is, for instance, as a psychic or whatever kind of healer or shaman, their gift really may not be in business. So it likely can... isn't in business, right? It likely isn't. And so then it's knowing that you're not everything. You can't do everything. And it's asking for help. It's getting help. And, and, and I, I say asking, I ask spirit first to guide me to the people, the, the, the people, the places that are going to help me to serve humanity in a greater way. Um, and then it's being open to that help because a lot of times we have the ego that goes, no, I should be able to figure this out on my own. Um, but I think it's inviting that help. And, and you know, I, there's conflict around this. Not everybody believes this, but I do think that we need to invest in the things that are going to invest in us. And so I do believe that, I don't want to say it takes money to make money, but that's that's a term that you've got to make an investment. Whether it's an investment in your education, it's an investment in, in an in a, um, accountant, an investment in an attorney, an investment in a business advisor. Like we've got to be willing to put energy in so that we can receive energy back. That's how life works, period. What goes around comes around. You give in, you'll get back. But I think a lot of times people feel like, no, no, I can't, I don't have it. I can't do it. And then they wonder why they're feeling stuck. Well, because you're not moving. Because you're holding on thinking you need to do it all. You can't do it all. We can't do it all. And we need people. Yes. We Having need, a team is people. huge. And we need help. Absolutely. We need help. And there are so many countries for people who are just starting out. And if, let's say, for instance, you do live in the USA and you may find that the hourly here is a little too rich for your blood at this point. There are other countries when you're just starting out and these people are hungry and yes. do beautiful work and it's a value system. What we would pay them, which seems little for them is a tremendous amount of money in their country. And yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it globally, it's a win-win and it helps people who are starting. The other thing I see these days, Sonny, I'd like you to speak to is platforms. Oh my God. Like what was cool and working once, you know, a couple of years later, changes, changes, changes. I mean, I know now the membership site and the sort of the low low ball men membership site is really up and done in a very particular way. But how do people keep up with all of this rapid no, change? Yeah, such a good question. Oh my God. I wish I had the right answers for it. I can tell you that what I see is everybody jumps on all bandwagons and then they lose all their energy because all they're doing is being on the bandwagon and not actually doing their work. And then they lose their passion and then they lose their why. And then they are stuck and, and, and wonder, okay, well, what the point, what, what, what the hell am I doing? Right. 
Um, I think that what we do is we got to do the things that feel good for us, that we enjoy, that we like to do, um, that that bring us, that, that bring that passion out of us. And it's not going to be, I mean, none of us said, <clears throat> I want to be on social media for 24 hours a day so that I can be a psychic medium. Like where would the space and time be? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But if you have a platform that works for you or that you like, or that you've grown an audience to, you don't have to go jump on every single one. Like I, my publisher, <clears throat> when the pandemic started, said, sent me a thing, said, get on TikTok. You will do fantastic on TikTok. And I went to TikTok because, you know, I'm not always a good listener, um, but I did go and look at it. And I'm like, that is not my gig. I'm not, I am not going to do some little dance with my fingers. Like it's not <laughs> me. And I don't want to knock the people that do because it's worked great for some people, but I can't, my nervous system goes mm -hmm. just looking at it. I can't do it. Right. So I didn't do it. And, and then he's like, you should have, you could have been blah, blah, blah. You could have been, blah, blah. you know what? I did what I feel what is true for me. And if mm -hmm. I'm not, if I'm not being true to me, I can't do the work I'm doing. I can't, I'm not, I can't pretend to be and do something and then not have it be in alignment with me. That go that goes against my values and principles as a being, let alone as an entrepreneur. So I think, you know, find the platform that works for you. Obviously you found the things that work for you and you found a system, which I love that, a system that helps you to put it out. So it's not like I got to manage 27 different things or a person or a group or a, 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 a business partner, something so that you don't have to do it all. We're not meant to always be everywhere for everybody all the time. And you got to find what works for you. And that part is, you know, some, some, some trial and error, but error isn't failure, isn't bad failure. I don't even look at failure as failure. I can't even stand the word. It's just growth. Like, okay, I have some experience now. Yes. Now you might have a different answer, but that that's, that's how it feels to me is like, just, just don't jump on 27 different things. You're not even doing the thing you want to do. Yes, absolutely. We have a finite amount of energy and hours and all of that in this 3D, almost 5D world at this point. But I teach that in my media classes 100%. I have these spiritual entrepreneurs who come and say, oh my goodness, I have to have a podcast. I have to write a blog. I have to start doing videos. I need to write a book. I, you know, all of this. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Take a breath. What are you amazing at? And what do you love? Yes. That's your sweet spot. Honor that. The rest of it, let it go. Because if you just channel your energy in those directions, sometimes it's not a book. Mm -hmm. So what everybody else is writing, right? Maybe that's not for you. Often it's not a video. Almost a hundred percent of the time, it's not a podcast because there's something called pod fade where everybody who thinks, oh, I'm so good at talking. All I need to do is, you know, get a podcast and everyone will get to know me. No, my God. And they find out it's a huge amount of work and you haven't even built in an audience. So there's nobody there watching or listening to you. And it, it's huge. Which is super frustrating too, when you put all that time and energy in and then you're like talking to three people, like you you know, so, so I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, something you said, Debbie, that just reminded me, and I have this actually sitting right here on my computer. It's only sticky. I don't use stickies because I don't like stickies because it makes me crazy, but this is the only one I have and you probably can't read it, but it says, yes. did you use the time you were given? Well, mm. and I think that's a great, just exactly what you're saying is there's only so much amount of time. And are you using the time that you are given on in a day? in an hour, in, the, in in your month, in your life, are you using that well? And I don't mean well, like by somebody else's perspective, are you using it well for you? And if you're not, adjust. You know, if you're not, make adjustments because ultimately that's the currency. It's time that the energy that we have, that's the currency we have. We measure it by money, but really it's time guys. That that's That is what we're exchanging right now. Mm -mm -mm. I love that. Did you use your time? Well, I might add, did you use your gifts? Well, mm -hmm, for sure. If you're focusing on your gifts, all that minutia, you're going to farm out. You're going to hire someone to take care of that. So you can do you. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. And, and, and I think depending on, so the thing that will speak to you is if you're someone that's like, Nope, I'm not using my gifts very well. That one is going to speak to you. If you're somebody like I struggle with time, 
time is one of my other challenges because I just always feel like I want to do more than what there is measurable in any given day, right? And so when you find what that thing is for you that keeps you on track, that message right there keeps me on track. Have I used my time well today? Because mm-hmm. um, I know I'm using my gifts. I know I'll do that. That that I've got clear. But for some of you that are listening, you might be like, no, I'm using my time well, but I'm not using my gifts. So whichever way that is for you or both, start to just adjust. You get to choose how you put, where you put your attention, your time and your energy in. Beautiful. I'm so curious if we can shift a little bit. I want to ask you about this psychic medium work where you're helping to find missing persons and also solving homicide cases. Can you share a little bit about that and maybe a story or two? Sure. Um, You know, I've been doing that for a long, long time. Uh, I think, I think I started in 2004. So gosh, holy crap. (laughs) I'm like, well, you know, as you get older, you like start doing the math. You're like, dang, that's a long time. (laughs) Okay. It's almost 20 years. Um, I'm usually used to saying 10 or 15. So obviously some years have passed, but you know, I I started doing this because um, I would, I don't watch the news and I haven't watched the news for about 25 years, but my husband uh, in the early days was. And so one day I walked by um, when he was watching the news and there was a missing person. Uh, Her face was on the the TV and, um, and she came to me at that night and every single night for the two, for the next two weeks, she was missing. She was a local woman that was missing here in Arizona. And um, every single night when she came to me, she told me what had happened to her. And she showed me, I saw visions of the different p- things that were happening. And she warned me, she said, if they don't get him now, they won't be able to. And I didn't know what to do. Um, I'd had some kind of flashes of that throughout my life, but not like this, like every single day. Um, and I didn't watch the television, but I told my husband every single day what they she said and then he'd watch and he'd say nope they're not saying anything and then two days later like oh they just said they just said what you just said so I'm like so I called the police one day and I said um there's this woman that's missing and um blah 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 and I told them everything that I knew and then they called me back and said how do you know this and that scared the shit out of me because then all of a sudden they're like well why do you know and that's uh, I'm like okay that now this isn't safe anymore. Okay. So, so then I felt really frustrated, like, okay, these things are coming. There's got to be a reason. There's got to be some value in it. What do I do? And of course the universe, I asked for help. And I think two weeks later, a girl that was a client of mine said, Hey, I have this guy that started this group just recently. Um, he's a ex, um, um, DEA agent. And he started this group for psychics to work on missing persons cases. Of course, of course he did. So I reached out to him and I've been working with him ever since. And so we work on cases where we get the information about the person. Most of the time, this is, we're like the last, the last person contacted, you know, they've tried everything and they haven't been able to find their loved one. Um, We've had a couple of really great cases. I think we've, I think we have found, I think we're at about 65 Um, maybe 70 uh, people that we've been able to find either most of them, we found them deceased. Um, But I think there's about six or eight that we found alive and and been able to make a difference in them being alive. So that's been beautiful. One of the cases that we did was a man who went missing. He was taking care of his mom. He lived with his mom and he was taking care of him, taking care of her. And he went missing just in the afternoon one day. And they they had no, like, no reason to have no idea where he might be. Um, and, and when we get the information, we get a picture, we get their birth date, and we usually get the city and state that they're missing from. And that's it. We don't get any circumstances at all. Now, this guy's picture, um, when you saw him, um, you could tell he'd had a hard life. And so we can imagine what that looks like. You just could tell that he'd gone through a lot just looking at his face. And so um, there, there can be kind of the ego can come in, you know, that has the idea of this person looks like a biker, or this person looks like a gang member, or this per- you know, there's all those kinds of things. But um, in this particular case, when I did the, um, my process, which is I take a map of the US and I just break it down and break it down and break it down and break it down until I feel pulled to a particular area. Um, and then I asked questions to kind of pull into where I need to go. Um, and the message was that he, um, went for a walk and slipped and drowned. And, um, 
and a lot of the uh, news, because he did have a little bit of a sordid past, uh, was saying a lot of different things, apparently. I didn't know this at the time, but we found out after. So I gave a, a when we do our, um, our reports, we have to sit, give a GPS coordinates exactly where we believe either the body is, where they're, they're living or where they're hiding. We give um, license plate information, names of suspects. Like we, we do almost like a police report of what we fill. And we don't have to fill it all in, but the GPS coordinates of where the body is, is the most important piece. And um, so we turned that in, this was in December. And, um, and of course that, that was, you know, I knew he was in a body of water, uh, but it's December. And so, you know, the, by the time that they got the report and everything, it was January, the river, uh, was frozen or the, um, lake was frozen, whatever. When they finally got to check the GPS coordinates, um, in, uh, April, um, they found his body, um, a 10th or I'm sorry, a hundred feet from my GPS coordinates. And, um, and they checked twice and his, his body was actually stuck under a tree. And the, the beauty of that and the beauty in this work, it's the hardest work I do, quite honestly. You can even feel my vibration drop a little as we're talking because it's hard. You know, it's always, it, it, it's always um, on a human level, there's sadness, not on a spirit level, like they're free and I can get that whole part, but the, the family and the, and the loss and the wondering. Um, but his mother was able to have closure. And, um, and, and I, so for me, that's why I do it, uh, is because it can create some, some answers to questions that people don't have and, and closure and justice, because a lot of times it's at the hands of someone. Um, and, and, and so it's the difficult, it's the most difficult work I do. Uh, and I think in, in some ways it, it's the, um, the work that feels like the most, um, beneficial because it literally can, um, release people from not from one level of pain, one level of pain. So I, I feel very blessed to have that organization. And we've done a lot of work and a lot, you know, we don't charge any money. It's all, um, uh, we all donate our time. We have search and rescue animals um, as well that that work with us. And, and, and oftentimes we'll go to particular locations um, if we have the, the availability. Um, and so it's it's been a really powerful um, blessing uh, to do, to do that work. And it all started with that one face that splashed right in front of me crossing the TV one day. So what happened with her? Was there resolution there? Did the police work with you with the original woman? In that particular, um, situation, the police did not, they, um, questioned me three or four times, uh, which I was like, Hey, I don't want to do any of this ever again. Um, and ultimately what happened is exactly what she'd said to me. Her husband had, had, um, had killed her. I knew, I knew where she was. I didn't know the exact coordinates. I hadn't, I hadn't trained myself well enough at that point, but I knew what part of the desert. Um, and then he killed himself. And so, and she said that she said, if they don't get him, um, they're not going to be able to. And, uh, they didn't, they were, uh, you know, a few weeks behind his plan and they found him, um, they found him dead after they finally, um, interviewed him and, and move forward. So there wasn't the, I mean, they did find her body, but it was seven months later. And, um, and so there was resolution. Ultimately, it was a big case in Arizona, um, because it was a well known, um, a well known community member. Um, but they did, they were able to ultimately have closure for the family. Mm. Um, but it was longer than what I would have liked it to be. I just feel compelled to ask this question. Does it ever come up that you're looking for a missing child and it's it turns out there's some sex trafficking going on we are involved in sex trafficking as well um and so that is absolutely a part of the work that that um that shows up yes absolutely and you know the, the children i think are the ones that i struggle with the most um in in whether it's sex trafficking or they're missing or they're you know we've had some where they've um been abducted for, um, for financial gain. Um, and, um, there it's so it's just, you know, it, it's, it, it shouldn't be different because children are spirits too. And, and, but, but it is in, 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 for me anyway, I'll speak for myself. Um, and, um, and it's hard and the, and the trafficking 
is, uh, you know, we hate to recognize that that is a real thing, but it is huge in the United States. And it's not just in the places you think like the Mexican border. It is not, guys. It is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, they're making big money. Big money. So- I understand. Yeah. And I know there's a new movie that's out about this that is having huge impact on people seeing it about this subject. I want to say to you, Sunny, thank you for the good work you do. That's amazing. You do this for free and you donate your talent and you give people a body, often peace. Maybe the human comes back. But, you know, what amazing work you're doing. I can imagine how difficult it is, but I just want to commend you for stepping up. Well, and I, and I feel blessed. I have, we have a group, you know, it's a group of people. So we all come together and, um, and are able to, we all do work on it individually. But, you know, the more that we have people that are working together for a common goal, always in every aspect of life the better it's going to be. And so we have a really amazing group and and our leader has been, he's done this work for so long and left, you know, DEA and working undercover and things to be able to do this. And, and, and we, none of us get paid and he's put a lot of time and energy into it. So I feel like it's a, you know, it's a beautiful gift. And um, the more that we have people that have these talents and we can use them in positive ways, um, it only benefits humanity. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. So this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, goodness. That's a great question. You know, I love dreams and I love goals. So I got a list. Um, But I'll tell you what I'm pretty excited about right now. So I just got back from Peru last week. I took um, 29 people uh, to Peru for, um, for two weeks. And I love traveling and I love taking people to uh, locations that they wouldn't they wouldn't go on their own um, for a variety of different reasons. And so um, my next uh, uh, trip that we're this this trip is coming up next year. And then we just are booking the following one because I love to travel is um, we're walking the Camino. So the Camino de Santiago in Spain. Um, so I'm taking a, a, a group of, of people to, um, to do that, um, the pilgrimage yes. and to go and have some fun too, because it's not all just about pilgrimage, uh, but we're going to spend some time in, in uh, Portugal and some time in um, hopefully in Barcelona. And uh, so I'm super excited about that. So I always love travel. And I think too, the other thing is, you know, as, as I've been in this career for a long, long time. Um, you know, the place that I really like to spend more of my time is mentoring those that are, that are kind of, you know, it's almost like, I feel like the grandma, even though I'm very young. Um, but I feel like, like, I feel like it's, we, I want to have some of the younger people that are ready to step into this work, uh, and help them skip through so much of the, that I did, you know, I I muddled my way through all of it because I didn't have anybody to model any of it. Uh, And so I really feel like that's where I feel guided to. It doesn't have to necessarily be younger people, but people that are just stepping in that, you know, there's so many roads you can go and and there's so many things that I've learned most of what not to do um, that can help just take some of that time energy so that we can move forward in in, in ways that can make a difference with humanity now. Mm -hmm. So Thank that, you so much. Me. I'm so glad you came on the show. Um, I appreciate the, this connection with you. You're just delicious. And uh, Sunny Dawn Johnston, thank you so much. Thank you, sister. I appreciate it, Debbie. Thanks, everyone. And for anybody who'd like to check her out and some of the things she mentioned, go to Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y, Dawn, D-A-W-N, Johnston, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N, dot com com sunny dawn johnson.com and i end today's show with this quote within the depths of your soul lies a universe of infinite possibilities where the whispers of the cosmos intertwine with the essence of your being revealing the boundless power that resides within subscribe to this number one transformation conversation Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment. I read them all and I appreciate you being on this journey. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Gita Rose. She channels an extraterrestrial hybrid named Bella of the Yael. And also, Gita offers songs that vibrate and resonate with creation. Remember, don't just dare to dream, manage your time, manage your gifts 
put them out there. Everything you learned today, you are here for such great reason. Thanks for being.